Hello everybody and welcome to my week and a half review with the iPhone 14 Pro Max. Here we are. Uh, it is in deep purple and as you know previous to this device I was walk rocking the uh, iPhone 13 Pro Max in Sierra Blue. Now we've got the deep purple 14 Pro Max. Um, really one of the big reasons deep down inside that I thought, you know, I don't need to upgrade from the 13 to the 14, but because I'm on a lease on demand, jump on demand program with T-Mobile, it was either continuing to pay for the iPhone 13 Pro Max or pay that same fee towards a new device. And then at the end of, you know, 12 months, uh, I can swap it out for the iPhone 15 Pro Max or Ultra, whatever may be the next future device. So um, here we are. Um, you know, I it's funny. I say this is going to be like the last couple days that I've got this device. But I the longer I hold on to it, the worse I feel about keeping it in the house. So I really need to just bring it back. Um, one thing that I can give you some information about is if you like the Apple uh, clear case for the iPhone. Okay, I can't get it off. That's okay. You can kind of tell um, the uh, white ring is kind of yellowed out a little bit. Now, remember, I've had this for about 15 months. Um, dropped it a couple times. We got some flatten flattening here. We also have some cracking. I do take the device out of the case just to clean the edges because dirt does get underneath. But overall, I mean, it's held up. I did drop it about, what, three months ago, two months ago in Disney and it hit the ground and it like cracked the case. And there's this little hook right here. It keeps hooking on my pants. So I learned to put my finger over it as I pulled it out of my pocket. And it's weird now that I've got the new case and all that and it doesn't need that. So it's funny how I got used to that. But anyways, the 13 is a great device. Yes, it has a SIM tray. I was concerned because I do have like, I have the Pixel 6 Pro. And I was like, if I ever really want to switch, I have to do eSIM because I don't have a SIM card anymore. So I'd actually have to call T-Mobile to do that. But, you know, that's a whole nother time, a whole nother video for a whole nother time. But uh, compared to having the notch to this dynamic island, so much more usability here. And you lose the top of the screen here. Yes, it's in the middle of the screen, but there's so much you know, clicking, you can even just clicking on it without anything open, you see it's already flexing a little bit. But timers, apps, uh, activities, if you're watching a sports score, it'll be right up there. You start navigation and then you go to your music and navigation pops up top. You can swipe, like click and hold and pull it down a little bit. If you go back to the music, you can click and slide down a little bit and it gives you Really good multitask ability on a device that even though it has a big screen, multitasking on a phone is not easy. I've had many Android devices and that's been around for a long time and it just never feels good, never feels well done. And I would have to say for a simple little notch to have things that pop up in and out of it, it works really well. And I use it a lot more than like the two times I always tested it on my Pixel or my Samsung Galaxy. And I just feel like this is a day-to-day -day thing that you'll use because it forces you to use it. But then you're up to date on whatever you're trying to look at in the background. It's really great. So it's not a complete selling point, but the better screen, the brighter screen. I live in California now, so the sun is out a lot. And that extra nits of brightness going from 13 or 1200 nits to 16 and then 2000 if you're in direct sunlight it'll automatically boost it is a great deal so view visibility in the sun is awesome uh better uh front facing autofocus rear camera at 48 megapixel i think that's great over the 12 that you get here but that zoom at two times is zooming in on that 48 to get 12 which is really cool um I did notice something and I don't, I didn't hear it in a lot of the reviews. Let's see. So this is what they call the true tone flash. It's got like kind of a more, I don't know, I'd say skin tone flash on the left side here. And then on the right side, it's a little yellower. Uh, let's see. There you go. You can see it there. Okay. And then they did a complete change on the flash here. 
you got white on the outside and like a 50 50 flash of skin tone and stuff like that so they've definitely this whole generation they changed that flash um one thing i don't know if i'm true i thought maybe this was a little bit bigger lidar but now that i look at it close up i think they're the same it's easier to see this blue one underneath the lens than it is to see it under this purple i thought they were bigger never mind but anyways you've got bigger uh lenses themselves people were concerned with the rocking of the device on flat surfaces it's about the same if not slightly worse but um you do have sim card tray here oops sorry over here and you don't have one over here uh, another thing that they were saying when you line them up is that they slightly moved the power button just a little bit down for for grabability. One thing they did do, though, and you can see it blatantly, is they made that 5G antenna bar bigger. So I have noticed that I have 5G in places that I didn't used to have 5G. Um, and then I also get 5G UC on T-Mobile a lot more on this device. So kudos to the upgrade to 5G. If it's the chip, if it's the antenna, all the way around, be better pluses all the way um again like i said the uh lightning is still here next year uh this 2023 release uh should have the USB-C because in 2024 you have to have it to be able for uk to sell iphones and it will be the phone that comes out in october that will roll through the rest of 2024 so i would assume that's something apple is focusing on very heavily right now um, speakers are supposed to be better here. I use my, um, AirPod Maxes and my AirPod Pros. I have not upgraded to the Pro 2s yet. Um, don't break, don't replace something that's not broken, I guess is the right way to say it. Battery life is still great on my, uh, Pro Max or my AirPod Pros right now. Sorry. Uh, that was my get ready to go to bed. But anywho, um, what else? Haven't had a chance to try out the satellite, uh, you know, 911 services. I don't think I ever will, but it's very nice to have it if I am in that remote area and need it. Um, crash detection, you can't really test it until you actually get in a crash. Fingers crossed, knock on wood, that that never happens. But, you know, it is it is a feature and, uh, you know, someone will tell a story that it saved you, their lives um, Android has had it for a while, but again, Apple seems to do everything a little later, but they do it their own way, and it usually usually comes out on top as a better feature than it is with like Android and just the way they put it together really quick, if that makes any sense. Maybe that's just my own opinion. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, not really that much more. Again, running 16.2. That allows you to actually turn off the background. If it wasn't, if it was just 16.0 or 16.1, you would have the background that you just saw, but it would be faded out. Some people find that it still feels like it's on, even though it's not. Because even if you had, like, for example, I don't think it's in night mode yet. Oh, shoot, my pixel. Oh, my pixel ran out of juice. Okay, the other pixels also out of juice. But it would go into a grayscale mode or it would be faded off and literally all you would see is the time and maybe a notification or two. But with this one, you can turn everything off. Now, it's not going to do that because it's now in sleep mode, but it would just show the clock and probably the white line or something like that if you just tap it. But it's still... Uh, an improvement the battery life is supposed to be equivalent to this obviously you got a bigger better screen a better processor so you may lose a little battery life in that but with this 14.6 no 16.2 update that just came out it's supposed to save battery and better performance so we'll just see how the year plays out uh, one thing i was going to show you guys and i actually have this phone on for this reason now, I've had this for a year. I have plugged it into a lightning connector of just a handful of times, honestly. Um, so if we go to battery, so this is all running off of the um, MagSafe connector. So if I go over to battery health and charging. So after 15 months, we're at 92% maximum capacity. That is not bad. 
Um, I charge my phone roughly every day um, and battery life usually goes down to about 50% most days. If I go to uh, Disney, you know, we get way further down the line, but I've also been using the MagSafe uh, Apple charger, which is a perfectly good investment. Here we go. I know that there's some third parties out there, Anker, stuff like that, but here it is. Again, I've had this for oof, two years. I think I got it with a 12, maybe even the 11. I can't remember. No, 12. But yeah, it's uh, it works well. It's, uh, I think it was 1,500 milliamps or something like that. So, you know, I take it to Disney, plug it into the device right away. So it's just another way to charge it on top of the standard, uh, I can't get it on frame, the MagSafe, which Apple has. But that's the way I charge my phone. So... If you're someone that has to charge it a lot more frequently, I'm not, I wouldn't call myself a power user. Um, a lot of the gaming I ever do is on this iPad Pro. This is the 2020, 2021 model. Um, it's the fifth generation and I've been doing well to use it on everything. And what I game, I do it that way. Not usually on a device unless it's something simple. So uh, hopefully that gives you an overall feel. Uh, I guess in the end, it's up to you. But if I was someone that purchased this, if I was at T-Mobile and I was buying it and I was going to pay the monthly fee and, you know, the iPhone 14 came out, honestly, as a tech person, someone that needs to have the latest and greatest, I would have stuck with this. I'm only upgrading. And I, I say that I'm only upgrading now, but technically I already did. I'm sticking with it. I'm going to the 14 Pro Max because that same monthly fee I'm right here, which has stopped because I need to turn it in. I just move it over to this. You know, it's the same monthly fee and you get a better one year newer processor, uh, better cameras, you know, the dynamic island instead of the notch, which everybody said we need to get rid of it. But honestly, you don't, you get over that real quick. But this one, this dynamic island, it's just the beginning for it. And I could totally see them, not that they would do it on an iPad Pro because there's a bezel that makes it so it's disappeared, but I can see this being like it, whatever devices come out next year, 2023, iPhones, they will not have the notch anymore. I think that, that the whole lineup, whatever it may be, is going to switch over. It can't be a pro feature the second year. I just can't see that. I can see them replacing it. But we'll just wait and see. We'll see if there's USB-C. But I hope that this answered a lot of questions. But honestly, if you have a 13 Pro Max, I can't say about the Pro 13 or the Mini 13 or the Standard 13. But if you're a Pro Max holder of the 13 line, I would say stick with it one more year. Wait for that USB-C plug. They're going to improve the battery. I've noticed something that Apple has been doing with these new, this like, you know, 12, 13, 14 iPhones. They are increasing the thickness of the device just a little bit. I have literally have the 13 case, the 14 case, and in the drawer I have the 11 and the 12. So I've definitely bought every single year's case because it this one doesn't work on this one. The previous one on the 12 doesn't work on the 13 because they're making slight adjustments to this hump. Maybe that's their way of selling more cases every year. But I mean, the cases I've noticed from Apple are not the best. But, and I, I'm coming from a Tech 21 standpoint, that because they've got MagSafe built into them and it extends it so you can use a MagSafe case or a MagSafe charger, you can use your dock like uh, your iPhone dock for like when you're in the car so you can look at your phone and everything. The one I have is really awesome and I got it off of Amazon and it only works if you have this. Otherwise, you have to have the device out of the case. If Tech 21, if I noticed that they jumped into the, you know, adding MagSafe magnets to it, I would jump back any day. Their cases are cheaper, better design, and they withstand a lot more drops you know. But anyways, uh, hopefully that helped you out. Uh, let me know in the comments below if you did decide to upgrade to the 14 line or if you decided to 
buy possibly a new 13 because Apple is still holding on to a couple of them. Or if you went for a refurb online. Or if you went to a carrier that still has some 13s left over. Um, I'd love to hear. But thank you guys for watching. And look forward to... I know they just people are putting out their 90-day reviews on this. I'll put out, you know, a 90-day review when it hits for me. Um, if I don't, you know, maybe it's a six-month review. But I hope you guys have an amazing holiday. Uh, Happy New Year. And uh, look forward to other videos out there. And possibly a review of another watch. You never know if that's coming down the line. Have a great day, guys. Bye for now.